Ladies and welcome! Bitcoin, Wall Street and gold bounce sharply. This and other fresh news from crypto world are already in our channel, so keep an eye on, we start right now. Bitcoin is growing ahead of the ECB meeting. Bitcoin bounced back on Thursday as the dollar weakened. Bitcoin, the US dollar, rose 1.89%, hitting an intraday height of $10,417. Earlier this week, the pair traded for just $9,800. Traders still avoid placing larger bets in any direction. This keeps Bitcoin in trading range of $300 to $400 until the ECB offers more forward-looking predictions about the health of the European economy. Crypto market capitalization rises $22 billion as Bitcoin, Wall Street and gold bounce sharply. Wall Street and gold both posted decent gains during yesterday's trading session. Bitcoin followed the rally on Wall Street on Wednesday and climbed to around $10,400. Most altcoins are also marketed in green as their total market capitalization increased by $22 billion in the last day. Ethereum, Polkadot and Chainlink are up about 10%, while DeFi tokens lead the most gains at EFI hits 3 BTC again. The altcoin market suffered serious losses last week. However, today we are showing signs of recovery with green domination. Ethereum is up 10% to surpass $370, while Ripple is up 4% to nearly $0.25. Bitcoin hash rate stays high during monsoons. The heavy rains did not negatively affect the mining industry in China. According to a September 10 Stack Funds report, the hash rate of the Bitcoin network remains high and largely unfazed by the rainy season and power outages in China. Glassnode data shows the hash rate hit an all-time high on September 8, breaking the 150 terahashes per barrier for the first time in Bitcoin history. Swisscom blockchain receives grant from Web3 to help proof-of-stake network tighten Polkadot. A grant was received to create a cloud-based protection layer for members of the Ethereum-based Polkadot network. The grant announced on Tuesday will help create the Kubernetes operator for Polkadot from Swisscom blockchain, a way to protect participants involved in the validation process on Polkadot and the Kusama testnet from losing their stake tokens in the event of an attack or network breach. Tether launched on Solana to take advantage of high speeds and low cost. Tether, the company behind the largest stablecoin in the crypto market, has announced its partnership with the Solana network. Tether, the company behind the USDT stablecoin, announced that it has launched its coin on Solana, a blockchain platform that seeks to compete with Ethereum. In a press release issued by CryptoSlate, the company announced that Solana will allow users to exchange USDT at over 50,000 transactions per second for less than $0.0001. Hackers demand $7.7 .7 million in Bitcoin from electricity company. Pakistan's electricity producer fell victim to hackers and has to pay millions in Bitcoin. K-Electric, Pakistan's largest electricity producer and the only supplier in the city of Karachi, was hit by a ransomware attack this week when hackers demanded more than $7 million in Bitcoin to restore their services, according to cybersecurity website Bleeping Computer. Revolut enters Japan as the first non-English language market. Japan has two major crypto companies. The London-based firm has launched its digital banking app in Japan, as reported by Revolt in a September 8 tweet. Japan is the first non-English speaking market for Revolt, according to the Nikkei report. The London-based company reportedly has 13 million users worldwide operating in European countries, the United States, Australia and Singapore. As reported, the initial deployment of Revolt in Japan will be limited to international transfers and money management in 23 currencies. Registered users will also receive a Visa debit card under the Revolt brand. Ethereum flips Bitcoin for weekly average transfer cost. 
The recent surge in DeFi activity has given rise to Ethereum in terms of its economic value as a network. A recent report from analyst firm CoinMetrix showed that Ethereum turned Bitcoin upside down in terms of 7-day average weekly transfers, which have non reached $3.08 billion compared to $3 billion for BTC. Nexus Mutual exceeds 1% of DeFi TVL's total sales as entrance market heating up. Nexus Mutual has surpassed $74 million in active coverage. Nexus Mutual, an insurance coverage provider for decentralized finance protocols, has exceeded $74 million in active coverage. It now covers 206,763 EDH, which is about 1% of the total DeFi market. Although TVL remains relatively low compared to the main DeFi protocols, it's one of the two main insurance underwriters. Structural issues could cause low Bitcoin profitability on BitMEX. BitMEX offers the lowest return on Bitcoin cash and carry trades. Currently, the rate of return offered by BitMEX in Seychelles on a three-month basis is 2.71% year-on-year, which is a half of what competitive exchanges such as Binance, FTX and Deribit are offering, according to data source Q. BitMEX only accepts Bitcoin as collateral, meaning traders can pay or receive margins, gains and loss exclusively in Bitcoins. Thus, when the market falls, collateral loss value forcing long positions to close positions, opening offsetting positions. This, in turn, leads to further price reduction and more long liquidations. $5.4 million at our base hacked funds sent to Binance and Huobi. The recently hacked European exchange at our base is tracking some of the funds on Binance, Huobi and HitBTC. Days after the hack and seizure of $5.4 million worth of digital assets, European cryptocurrency exchange Etherbase said it hacked some of stolen funds on Binance, Huobi and HitBTC. The company turned to these exchanges for help and assured its users that Etherbase would survive. U-Swiss laws create a solid foundation for blockchain and cryptography. Crypto and blockchain are gaining more legal clarity in the Alpine country. According to Swiss Info report, the government has amended several laws from company bankruptcies to securities trading. The new body of laws defines the legality of digital securities exchanges as well as the legal process for recovering digital assets from companies that go bankrupt. It also defines the legal requirements for cryptocurrency exchanges to mitigate the risk of money laundering using cryptocurrencies. So guys, these are all news for now. Thank you for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see some more fresh news. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.